Hi all, I'm Lance Heaton and my talk is The Public Dollar, Finding and Flipping the Value of the Commons. Uh, it's an idea I've been trying to develop further and so looking for collaborators and, and further thoughts on how to how to do it. So uh, first thing I should say is, you know, um, I wanna get the obvious out of the way, which is I wanna acknowledge that, you know, the, there's reasonable limitations here. Uh, it's not a perfect idea, but of course nothing is. Uh, sorry, lost my screen. Um, this can be gamed, and of course, everything can be gamed. Uh, and really what I'm offering is a material approach. Uh, although I don't necessarily think of it as material approach, I think of it more as a pragmatic approach uh, in really thinking about how we can do something that other people are going to understand, appreciate, and value around the open, edu around open education. Um, so here we go. Uh, we inherently know the value of open educational practices. We get what it means uh, when students can freely open their learning materials. Uh, we swoon when our open access research is available to scholars around the world, enhancing this disciplinary discourse and sometimes literally saving lives. Uh, we breathe more, we breathe light more lightly uh, with the freedom that comes with not having to worry about copyright infringement or wanting to appropriately use other people's materials. Those experiences are powerful, impactful, and in many ways, priceless. Uh, ultimately, though, they are they're qualitative, rooted in the individual experiences that are under that are harder to translate or even get people to understand at the societal level. Uh, we need a clear mechanism for translating the power of open and communal goods in education in order to penetrate society's imagination about how transformative this movement really is. So short of a new system of copyright that systematically reconfigures private and public goods, we're left with a few options that, that people have been working you know, quite actively to, to address. Um, the open access and open education movements have done a lot in the past 20 years, but they're still subjected to a lot of open washing uh, schemes. So for instance, uh, a great example of this is, re is Nature's recent decision to charge over $11,000 in author processing fees uh, for an open access article. Uh, we also see countries' nationwide, nationwide policies where publishers introduce geo-blocking, where research is available in one country, but five miles away across an imaginary border, uh, it's no longer available. And then, of course, you know, in the United States, getting national legislation passed uh, by a hostile Congress that can't seem to even take care of its own citizens in the midst of a global pandemic seems utterly futile. Uh, of course, don't get me started on uh, the rise of inclusive access publisher deals at institutions. So the way that I see it or that I'm thinking about this is what we need is an alternative uh, way to crisply articulate the exponential value of open research and educational resources. What we need is a public dollar, a, a contract that succinctly captures the values of the commons. So we know that educational materials and research literature have skyrocketed over, uh, in prices over the last 40 years, uh, well beyond rates of inflation. These, these prices have little to do with the actual cost of production and everything to do with the inelastic nature of these goods. Beholden to instructors' requirements, students cannot trade out textbook A for textbook B, and increasingly they can't even access previous editions as a cheaper alternative. Scholars too need to access specific research literature. Uh, they can't trade out one finding for another. Publishers know this and they work to squeeze out uh, as, much pro uh, as much profit from that tension. By treating knowledge as a private good, even though much of it has been supported directly and indirectly by state and federal tax dollars, the markets revealed not only the value of such knowledge, but over the course of time, how that cost should continue to grow. That is, we not only have the current rate of what such tax produced knowledge should cost, but also at what rate that cost should increase. So what if we use this model to articulate just how invaluable such materials are when they are placed where they belong in the public commons? Some of this is obviously already being done. Uh, many institutions and organizations like Spark track money uh, by, by, uh, by money saved by students through OER projects. Uh, but what about creating a larger structure with actual formulas that provide a clear sense of what are the societal savings when educational materials and research become open? Uh, enough so that at any given time, every scholar, journal, academic society, institution can clearly speak to their quantitative contributions to the public good. 
So let's consider an example. This article, Cleavage, Cleavage of Structural Problems, was published in Nature, uh, in, Nature in 1970 by Lam Lee, uh, who worked at a public university. It is one of the most cited journal articles in the history, and to no surprise, it's still locked away 50 years later. Uh, if I wanted to just read this article within 48 hours, I'd need to pay $9. If I wanted my own copy, it'd be $32. We might do a basic calculation that each of those citations represents a download of a, free, uh, of a freely available article. Uh, I think that's a fairer method, me that's a fairer method, fairer measure uh, than just accessing since owning and the ability to return to, uh, to the article throughout one's research is an inherently more valuable than paying for temporary access. Thus, an open article, uh, an open access article would be valued at $8.6 million. But it doesn't just stop there. Citations are used largely uh, in discourse among scholars and the like. But what about other entities who might access and benefit from the research, but have never done so, but have never done so? Um, what about people reading the research in their, to help in their work with uh, work at hospitals, law firms, NGOs, and the industry? Uh, and let us not forget those who just seek to learn. These, these two would also represent $32 per download, which means the full value of this article uh, would include those downloads after adjusting for the, the citations. And since we don't know the number of the actual, uh, the number of, of downloads of this particular article, we can only kind of guess right now, but going forward, we'd be able to actually calculate that. Um, so if we're being generous, if we're being generous, we're looking at a 1.5 to one ratio of downloads to citations. Um, and we find that when we do that, that number comes to about nearly $13 million. Uh, so when we add that to that original number uh, of, of 9 million, this one article represents $21 million of potential public good. So thus, you know, oops, I missed a slide here. Sorry about that. Uh, um, but, if, but that $32, $32 per download is not a static number. Uh, it's a number that we can track over the past 50 years to understand its rate of Oh, sorry, its rate of increase uh, and adjust that price accordingly over the years based upon the projection of value uh, established by the market. Therefore, whenever downloads are happening of articles that are decades old, we are, we are sure to be capturing their appropriate value. Same mechanism can work for open educational resources. Um, in, in the, the idea here, the goal is to let the market lead the way in how to determine public value, how we create a representative public dollar. So if, and I, and I know that's a big if, the open community can find a way of creating the right mechanisms calculations, we, we will be able to capture and articulate this value, which is inherent to us, but often intangible to others. Uh, now it's easier said than done, but I think it's a project worth pursuing uh, to better articulate just how important the work is that we're all doing uh, in the realm of open education and research. So thank you. Thank you very much. As you know, that is a topic near and dear to my heart. <laughs> it's, I won't say, I mean, it's very much inspired by uh, several talks I've, I've seen of yours, so. <laughs> oh, well, we, the, the more the merrier on this topic. We all uh, need to be involved. For those of you who don't know, part of the, uh, the UNESCO recommendation on OER actually calls on all national governments to require that publicly funded research and educational resources be openly licensed. So uh, this message in this presentation is core to, I, I believe, what will happen over the next five, 10 years with national governments around the world. Uh, we have one minute for questions. The floor is open. Yeah, may, may I just say hallelujah? Thank you. <laughs> and I appreciate that. As you said, that, that. Q&A time. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that, that's my question and, and my answer. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Anybody else have a question they'd like to ask? We just have a few seconds left. I see lots of thumbs up and clapping in the chat window. I have, I have a question. Um, I don't know if you can see me. Uh, hi, Lance. So I'm actually thinking about um, what about the idea that the more cited an article is, like the more cited an article is. Does that make any sense? Like right. there's the, like there's like the rich a, get richer. what? The rich get richer. Yeah. So like, yeah. is there and also right 
we don't know necessarily when scholarship is published that it will be foundational. Mm -hmm. So do you think that maybe the, va the way that something is valued, should there be some kind of curve over time? Do you want to, do you want to set a set value for each piece of, like, no matter what it is, it's always like valued at $32. And I know you're using that as like an example unit, but does my question make sense? Yeah. Um, so the first is, you know, you know, the issue of the rich get richer or, you know, more citations will get more citations. Um, that that's a, that's, it's one of those, as I said at the beginning, like that, that's the game, like that's, that's not a thing that this will necessarily solve because okay. that's the gaming structure of, of citations or that's how citations can be gamed. Um, I, I mean, I do think, you know, I don't see it as a static number and I do, I certainly would think there's opportunities for, um, thinking about what those calculations or, or do those calculations work across disciplines or within disciplines. We know with some of the research that's out there that the more, um, the more cited an article is, that the more that journal costs people. Um, so like we, we have some of that research out there that I think, like I said, in some ways, it's just a way of, of playing it back to the, the, the larger realm of the discourse as a whole of like saying, okay, if that's what, what the value is, then we have to recognize what the value is of open access articles in these same venues.